Welcome to the PVC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. My name is John Chepkevich, Director of Scouting for the PVC, and joining me today is LIU's Raekwon Clark. What's going on, Raekwon? What's up, man? How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty well, man. How about yourself? You holding up okay during the quarantine here? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Just been working out, uh, trying to stay healthy, um, and spending a lot of time with my family. Okay, good. That seems like a great way to, you know, get through this kind of grind right here. I know it's kind of weighing heavy on everybody. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well, that you have access to a gym. Uh, I know it's, you know, coming out as a senior right now, it's a really strange time to be trying to navigate the beginning of your professional career. And uh, normally you would be going and working out for teams in like an intimate setting, like being pitted up against other guys that are vying for uh, roster spots and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you been making the most of this time right now in your training and whatnot? Like, what have you been doing to optimize these few months off? Oh, well, I think actually um, COVID was a bad thing that happened to the world, but like, I think it actually helped me a lot on um, um, preparing my game for the professional level. Uh, I began up a lot of shots. Um, um, working on my handle a lot, um, getting a lot of conditioning in, uh, trying to even get lighter on my feet so I could be even quicker. Uh, but mainly um, getting, to, getting um, up a lot of shots my handle and then working on getting to my spots and just being able to uh, rise up and being comfortable uh, to get my shot off. Um, and what else? Uh, that's really about it. Um, that's how I've been getting a lot better, uh, working out a lot um, and really putting emphasis on getting to my spots and being comfortable, and then it just shouldn't be no problem. So I should just be able to make the shot every time. For sure. I mean, that sounds like a good approach. And, like, as we, you know, as we do get into your film here, we'll end up diving into some of that stuff uh, okay. that you noted right there. And, you know, it's anyone who kind of knows your story can obviously deduce that, like, you have to be a hard worker because came out of high school, didn't really have offers flying in, and go from – like being a walk on to being your school's all time leading scorer. It's just a crazy story, and you don't get there without a lot of hard work and uh, yeah. effort. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. That was a, that's a crazy thing. I'm not, I don't like to, um, um, a lot of people tell me uh, I don't uh, congratulate myself a lot, but when I look back on it, it is a great accomplishment coming from a walk on to all time leading scorer. For sure. You should be really proud of that. And now, you know, even though it's uncertain times, it's an exciting time too, that you're going to be starting your professional career here soon. So just wanted to kind of do something different now here uh, since we have this downtime uh, and the draft is delayed and all that stuff. Figured we could go through some of your clips from this past year and touch on some areas that you particularly excel and that will translate nicely to the pros already. And maybe a few minor areas for improvement that you could tweak like you were alluding to in your training just to like uh, touch up your game and kind of take your game to the next level as a pro. Okay. Cool. So we're going to start. Uh, the one thing with, you know, guys such as yourself that uh, play at uh, lower mid-major schools is people like to see, you know, when you are pitted up against high major programs, how do you fare in those games, right? It's a low sample size, but oftentimes it's like a good little glimpse into you know, when you do kind of make that jump to the pros, yes. it's not going to be like. So we wanted to feature a couple clips here against Texas Tech at the outset just to give everybody a taste of how you fared in those games. So this first clip here, we're going to see, like, you guys are pushing the ball a little bit, a little bit of, like, a secondary break almost, and then you just get this out on the wing and you have this guy ISO'd out here. It's kind of crowded over here, though. You got a guy in the corner and a guy on your right right there. What are you kind of thinking here as this guy's closing out right now and you're kind of sizing him up to ISO him? What's going through your mind and what's your approach here? Um, well, so, like, um, we know uh, Texas Tech, they play a great um, help defense. Um, mm -hmm. like, normally, you won't see someone – like, they, they know probably I'm, I'm going to drive this way uh, to the right side. So, normally, you won't see somebody helping that uh, hard over to the ball side, but they keep somebody – in the paint at all times. So um, yeah. I knew my move was going to have to be quick, and I was going to have to uh, – once I got in the paint, it was going to have to be a quick move. So um, I jabbed 
and then I jabbed it, I jabbed again and ripped through and he opened up and then I just was able to uh, get back to the left side once he tried to cut me off. Yeah, I mean, it's a really, really quick jab move there. It's like you kind of lull him to sleep for a second and then you're super yeah. assertive. And one thing that I particularly noticed in your film is that you have awesome footwork while you're kind of dealing with physicality, right? You're able to like bully through guys with contact, rip it through and still kind of like get the euros in there and finish. And that, that seems to be one of the biggest strengths in your game. Um, we'll kind of hit on that more when we get to some transition stuff. But this clip here was particularly uh, impressive in that regard, I thought. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then the next clip, I mean, just I just had to include this one because uh, you just put this guy on the floor with this crossover right here. I mean, like absolutely quick between the legs, little crossover there and just break his ankles send him to the ground and then you know again that strength and going to the rim you draw this foul against chris clark here uh do you think that maybe like you know you might not be the like crazy like flashiest handler out there but do you think that like you've gotten better throughout your career at just like being really quick and decisive and assertive and getting to the rim and making one move and going um yeah um, that's all um, we're working out a lot uh I ain't too I ain't too with the flash. I'm I just like to get the job done. So um yeah. I drove left and he cut me off and I just it's just a reaction move. Um uh, we work on a lot of reaction and uh he went um to cut me off left and I just reacted to get back right once I seen that he cut me off. Yeah, and I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, guy ends up fouling you, so it's not like you get to because they have that good help defense. You don't get to close yeah. it out with like an emphatic dunk or anything, but that's still yeah. a hell of a highlight to send that guy on skates down to the ground. Yeah, their help defense is amazing. Yeah, I mean, their their defense is incredible, but, you know, to your credit, you were able to still get to the rim against them, which I think is a good sign of uh, things to come. So the next, uh, what we're going to really hit on here now is transition. Uh, I think you really excel in the open court and it's kind of due to a couple of those things that I was uh, referring to earlier with like your footwork and your strength and your assertiveness. So uh, over the course of this season, you were in the 85th percentile as a finisher in transition. And as we dive into this clip, uh, I think everyone's going to see why. So this first one, you get this rip on defense firstly. And then you're coming down the middle. There's two guys kind of on either side of you. Uh, do you want to maybe just talk me through, I guess, at the beginning, right? This guy tries to, like, rip you baseline. Do you want to maybe speak through first, like, you know, the defensive play here where you get the steal and then kind of, like, you know, what you're seeing in transition and how you decided to take that the whole way to the rack? All right. So, um, uh, Bishop, he, he, um, he's a very physical player, uh, shoot the ball well. So I knew I was going to have to uh, – Try to wall him up. So when when I went to wall him up, I thought he was going to try. He put his back to me, and the ball was up. I was able to get it from the back. And then once we got in transition, uh, Jenkins, he's kind of small, so I knew I was going to have to be quick because the quick guard, the quick guards, they're um they're able to poke the ball uh, very yeah. quick. I was going to have to make a quick move and pick the ball up and just use my stride. So. Right. And when you pause it, when you pause it right here, it seems like there's no way you're going to get through that. Right. Like, look at this, like both those guys, you think if they take one step in, they could kind of cut you off, but yeah. you just blast right through there. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with angles. That's what it is. So like yeah. I knew I got that angle on Jenkins. I knew I was going to be able to split. Uh, and then the kid on the left wasn't a good, but he didn't have a chance once then because I knew I was going to be able to use my body and I just put the ball out and then just got the layup. Yeah, I think you saying you're good with angles is like, that's so accurate. Like, that's a great way to describe, like, as we keep running through these clips, it'll kind of be a recurring theme. Like, you're just very good at, like, identifying where to go and how to, like, contort your body and get through small spaces. And you just do an awesome job with that and have a good sense for that. And I think we'll see on this one here, you get out and transition. This one... Just had to get it in there because the you got the dunk at the end, but I think it's kind of uh, can kind of get lost. This little move right here is pretty tough, right? Like you're catching the ball the whole way up above your head. Guy's going to come in and try to swipe it from you, and you just kind of like really quickly like bring it down and across one dribble and dunk. Like 
was that just kind of instincts taking over, knowing no, you had no, no, that before? That was just instincts. Uh, yeah. So another move I probably worked on a lot, and it just happened to uh, be able to. I was able to use it right there, and it actually worked. Yeah, I mean that was a that was definitely a cool one, and just kind of shows you're able to kind of be adaptable. Like it's a kind of high pass, and you just are able to catch it and react accordingly and make a, a you know a highlight play out of it. So definitely a good sign there. Um, now this one, you guys are kind of out in transition again, and this is just a nasty reverse finish here. So I mean, you catch this on the wing. I guess, you know, are you immediately thinking like there's a lot of congestion over here in the middle? Like, let me rip him baseline and see what I can do. Or what was your. Uh, we was in transition. So I was going to be able to uh, have a quick chance to hurry up and get it to the rim. So once I seen him, he had attacked me with his uh, with his foot up. Yeah. But well, um, it was a help right there. So I couldn't go back left. So I just had to go back uh, to the towards the baseline and he actually opened his legs up and I was able to get to the left side. Yeah. And then again, if you pause right here, like it makes you wonder how the hell you're going to finish that thing. But like, there's three guys all around you right there. And you somehow, again, the angles, you fly up right between all three of them and kind of give it the English off the glass there. Just a super impressive finish, man. And like, uh, I'm sure that a lot of hard work goes into this to like, Get the reps in and be comfortable finishing at all these different angles and through yeah. contact and all of that, right? We actually do um, uh, Coach DK, he actually makes us do um, um, do finishes like that before practice start. We started with Mike and then reverse uh, layups, and then we actually start doing layups just like that. Yeah, I mean that's that's a credit to your coaching staff for sure, yeah. and a credit to you they for really a lot for um, developing my game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you know, I think being able to take kind of take the instruction of your staff and like really yeah. hone in on it and apply it and improve going forward. I think that's a good sign for when you make this step to your professional career that you'll be able to kind of do the same and like evolve as a player and continue to grow into whatever system you end up falling into, right? Yes. Uh, next clip we have here. Um, again, we're focusing on transition. This one is just the strength, right? Like you're coming down the side here, you get a nice little like, go ahead pass to you yeah, and yeah. as you're kind of lining this up this guy's riding your hip the whole way in from the three point yeah, line. Yeah. what and you see another guy come in to help here one coming from behind like how are you sort of like calculating all this as you're going in like are you just gonna try to keep engaged with him and then kind of use his body as leverage to create space or like what are you thinking there? that's what it is because um, he's a high fire like um he dunks the ball at a high clip um and he's, he jumps very high so he could block shots so i knew uh i was gonna have to put my body into his so i knew once i bumped him it's it's no way that he was gonna be able to react to get to my shot and block it so I, as soon as i was about to go i just gave him a little bump um and then i just was able to finish it yeah that was just a perfect way to execute that and if you look at if we pause this at the end Dude is like the whole way past the baseline logo down there. You bumped him the whole way off the court, man. Like that's that's some strength right there. And like be, being able to create that space, like yeah, getting yeah. to the rim like that is, you know, a really crucial skill, especially when at the next level, people are going to be bigger, stronger, longer. Yeah. So definitely good to see that. And you've consistently done that throughout your career. Now this next clip here, this is the the Euro action. So I feel like this is pretty patented Raekwon Clark right here. Just like you get this come nice little pass there, first of all, from your teammate, but catch it at the volleyball line, two dribbles, and there's two guys in the paint right there, and it doesn't matter. You're getting that and one, right? Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, it, um a lot of they like to take a lot of charges, so um, we work on that a lot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Euro step, a lot of pro um, pro hops, right. a lot of spinning. So um, it was just one of them plays I um, fake right and then end up going left and it actually end up working. Yeah, that I mean, if if you go up against someone that's really well versed in the Euro step and has some strength, that's like really hard to stop, right? Yeah. Like that. That's really tough to stop. And yeah, uh, to your point about people trying to take charges, like, you know, with you being a guy that likes to, 
get downhill and get to the rim as frequently as you do, I'm sure that you kind of like got used to that over your career and tried to find ways to combat that with the Euros and with taking different angles and stuff. And it's definitely, definitely paid off, especially in transition here. So now this one, I just again, we don't have to go too in depth on this one, but again, they're running this time. This team's running a little bit of a zone. You yeah. just find the space in the middle, and then you hit them with the nasty euro again. Very I simple. Was actually, I was actually trying to get right on that, but uh, he hopped over so so fast. Oh, yeah, I had to go left, like because it was going to end up being a charge. So I end up, I just had to end up going left. Yeah, you can see it right there. Like he's like anticipating you going to the right and just totally lined up for it right there. But again, like not predetermining it is huge there, right? Like you yeah. are able to take that split second and react and know like, okay, I wanted to go right. He cut it off. Let me bounce the whole way back across. That's not easy to do. So um, well, yeah, that's everything I believe like um, you were able to react to a lot of stuff is just, it's no, it's not, it's, it's Defender's gonna have a hard time guarding you because you send you know what your first move is. You just have a counter. You don't want to have too many exactly. counters. You probably want one or two counters. Yeah, that you know, was just a counter. Right, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys, I feel like know, you know, they know what the counter should be, but they're not able to execute it like yeah. that quickly and crisply, right? And I think you have a really good feel for that, especially in transition like this. So. Uh, this one we did needed to get a little defense into offense because I think you've got potential for that uh, as well to kind of like initiate the break with some impact plays with blocks or steals. This is a nasty block. You just volleyball spike that. Your teammate ends up saving it, and then you get out and start leading this break here. And this time I think uh, what we'll see on these last two clips is I think teams kind of start to anticipate that you might try to, you know, Euro back to the left. Yeah you end up deciding if they don't wall you off to just keep going the whole way to the right and finish yeah. and that's kind of what you do here, right? Yes. Yeah. So I set them up with like a I set them up with like an in and out first. I think the in and out works a lot on you set them up with an in and out. Yeah, and right there. You think you're going left and then you just end up going right. So that's what right. I was set up for thinking I'm gonna go left to use the euro and I just keep going right. For sure. It, it gets them just enough off balance. And then, you know, this is like a kind of tall, lanky dude. And like, you're obviously stronger than him. So yeah, that, even that, get, kid good. that kid is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He can he can play. But like, just physicality wise, if you like gain one little sliver of leverage yeah. on him, like you're strong enough that you're going to be able to kind of finish through him. Right. Yeah. So again, really nice finish there. And then this one. Uh, I think this might be our last one. Again, I think that one was similar in that we'll see this guy kind of like jump over to the middle here. Yeah. Uh, the big man there that's trying to stop you in transition, he like jumps over toward the paint and you just keep going to the right. You kind of throw him off a little. Uh, it might have been a similar kind of little in and out. The in and out uh, and then just setting it up for me to go left, but I did not end up coming back right. Yeah, it's just like it's it's really subtle, but it's a really nasty move that's just yeah. very effective, especially in transition. Yeah, I agree. So this next section here, let me start this clip over. I think we're going to hit on uh, quickly just a potential improvement area for you, um, and that's going to be in shooting versatility. So I think that, you know, like some I'm sure you've heard sometimes that shooting is like a potential area for improvement, but yeah. I think you do a pretty good job when you're kind of just operating within the flow of the offense and, you know, spotting up and hitting catch and shoots, like, you know, when rotations break down and you're kind of wide open in the corner or something, right? Like you knock those down and uh, per synergy, you're in the 82nd percentile on unguarded catch and shoot shots in the half court, right? So I think that's a good sign that like, you know, it's not like your shot is broken or anything. Like, yeah, you can shoot the ball. If you're open, you're knocking it down. I think the next step or next evolution for you is just, you know, getting a little bit more comfortable when someone is kind of in your face combating you with length and then also getting a little bit more comfortable with, uh, you know, pulling up off the bounce and just, like, yeah, getting yeah. balance and everything. That's what I, 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 um, I agree with that. Um, it's just me being comfortable and then just confidence. Uh, 
it'll be some games I have all to, like unbelievable confidence because I hit my first shot and then right. it'll be a game I miss my first shot and now I'm kind of second guessing it. So it's just me getting up more reps of uh, me being out there more and then just be, having more confidence. I just think that just comes with me uh, working out more, getting up more reps and then me being out on a wing more to take more jump shots. That's all that is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, that's another contextual thing too, is that like in your role at LIU, like your role was to get to the rim, man. Like yeah. that's, that's, you know, that's what you were cut out to do there. But like, I think as you, your role maybe evolves a little bit more and like yeah. spaced out a little bit more and everything that the jump shot will become more a part of your game. And, you know, just getting up some more reps in, getting more, uh, comfortable, I think could go a long way. So we're just going to hit on two quick clips here that are kind of highlighting that. Um, this first one, you get a little bit of like a pick and pop action going yeah. uh, and, you know, end up missing it. Not a bad miss, but just, you know, this kind of long guy, you have some space, but a long defender kind of coming out at you. Shot looks pretty solid, but just getting, you know, getting used to that rhythm and getting more comfortable yeah. with those, right? Yes. And then this one, I think a uh, little baseline out of bounds action. It seems like the place, you know, kind of run for you to come up here. You end up pulling up and it just comes up short. Right. Yeah. Um, and then one more final example here, I think, is this one. I, I actually really like the beginning of this one because you create a lot of space there. Right. Like you yeah. like you get that little kind of step back going there. You create a lot of room, but then it just ends up coming up short again. So I think it's just a matter of like you have the tools like we were talking yeah. about before to like get to your spots, get your shot up. It's just more reps, yeah. Out, more reps, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, like on them shots, um, it's just more reps. That's really what it is with me. Uh, more just being more more reps, uh, being comfortable and just being confident. That's all. And once you got them three things, I think I'm I would make that shot probably seven out of ten times. Right. Yeah, it's just minor tweaks, more reps. And like, it seems like, you know, when you were talking about what you were uh, working on and what you were training on during the pre-draft process, it seems like you were alluding to exactly that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's so, exactly what I've been working on a lot. That's exactly what I've been working on. Yeah, so that's good, right? It's good to know that you, like, even before we got into this, that you were self-reflective enough to know, like, hey, this is how I can take my game to the next level. So yeah. that was just the one minor offensive thing. Uh, now we're going to go to the defensive end. And I think one of your strengths on defense is actually uh, post-up defense. Yeah, so yeah. I think this is particularly interesting because it gives you some versatility on defense to kind of like switch multiple positions and like kind of hold up in the post if you need to from time to time. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so this first one here, well, this team, I mean, they're looking to get it on the block and kind of ISO you in the post right here. Yeah. And I, I think, I mean, you you can maybe speak to what your kind of outlook is here first uh, before we roll the whole clip. Like he catches it, you know, in a decent spot. But then what are, what are you trying to do at this point? Like what is your oh, – yeah. this guy? We The scum report him, he's trying to uh, get his jump hook off. He's trying to use his right hand to uh, get his jump hook off. So okay. I'm going to force him baseline. So I'm just giving him all – the levers to think that I'm overplaying the right side. So just say, right. try to make him spin, spin yeah, so away I'm, from, I'm gonna, yeah. he's going to have to spin. So I'm just setting him up for it. I'm warming him up and then he just spins right into me. And then I was just able to keep warming him up. And now he's just out of position because he want to go right, but he can't. Right. You can tell like, as soon as he gets to right here and you're, you know, you're there for it. He's yeah. super uncomfortable immediately at that point in time, tries to like, awkwardly force yeah, it back up. He to right. Right, but he's on the left side, so it's kind of hard to just put the ball and go up and on that angle with your right hand. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, you know, it, it it would also be easy in these circumstances to pick up a foul in your in your case, but you do an awesome job of just staying straight up, maintaining yeah. verticality and not, like, bailing him out once he's uncomfortable there, right? And a lot of guys right at that point right there would kind of jump and, like, uh, you know, expose themselves to him drawing a foul, but you just stay steady. And I think you did that pretty consistently throughout the year. So I think we're going to see something kind of similar here in that they're swinging the ball around again, looking to get you kind of ISO down on the left block here. Uh, this one, 
the guy does get sort of to his uh, left shoulder for like a right hook, but you're very much anticipating it and very much right up in his grill. Was this again, like, you know, you knew the scouting report and like, even though he didn't spin baseline this time, you knew once he kind of hopped into it that that's what he was going to. Yeah. Um, um, that's, this actually shocked me from because um, he likes to uh, shoot a lot of jump shots out of the post. Okay. I was setting myself up to have to uh, get up in him, but he had made a quick move and I just was able to react and he tried to bump me. But I have a, like a lot of uh, my upper my upper strength body is good in my my core, so I yeah. was able to react to it. Um, and he actually ended up missing the shot. Yeah, I mean, you you first take those first couple bumps, and then when he does actually start to move, like, you'll see from here to here, you, like, really quickly just chop and move your feet to get up underneath him there, which, like, I think is easy to easy to miss. But, like, that quick movement with your feet, I think, really, like, Made him surprises him, right? Yeah. He's not expecting you to be there. He ends up flailing up an awkward shot. And again, if you look at your position right now, you're just as straight up as can be. So I think your ability to really like wall up in the post like that and then maintain position and verticality afterwards is like very impressive and definitely something that uh, will translate nicely to a switchable scheme. And then this one, we had to show off the hops a little bit. We got the, you know, you're <laughs> – this time, I think you're kind of like trying to, um, trying to like front him a little bit here. Yeah, so I was trying to front him um, because I he he had me uh, already deep in the paint. So I was, yeah. the only thing I had was to try to front him. Um, he actually kept the ball, but I was able to react quick and um, actually came up with the block. Yeah, I mean that's one of those things that you know, like at this point, you have. You know, you're fronting, but you have no help defense there at this point. So, you know, you they, the guy makes a great pass, but you just make the great defensive play, right? Your guy, your teammate, to his credit, does kind of recognize and try sprinting in from the corner and ripping, but maybe that helps a little bit. But then you yeah. getting the whole way back there is – that's a tough play to make. And then to keep it uh, in bounds to your teammate there too, just a really nice impact defensive play right there. And I think that kind of shows that, like, you know, you're not only a guy that can be physical and wall up, but you can also like get up and, uh, you know, make these kind of impact plays as well. Yeah. All right. So next play, Let's see how this one develops. Oh yeah. So they run like a little, little, what we're hitting on here with these ones is your potential defensive improvement area. Yeah. And kind of what I noticed yeah, go I, ahead. I think my uh, what I really need to prove on is um, improve on. I kind of like so when when I'm on ball, I'm able to. I'm probably terrific. Like when I'm guarding the ball or getting over screens, I'm I'm good at that. But my uh, what I'm bad at is uh, if I'm guarding somebody that's like a shooter or like they're just not as much in um in the offense, I kind of lose sight of them. And that's my coach been trying to help me with that probably for like the past two years. So I gotta get better with that. That's, that's the only thing I probably really would say I have to keep working on is um, just um, knowing and seeing my man at, as well as being in the help. Yeah, and I think I think sometimes you know the the like issue that arises it comes from like good intentions because you are initially maintaining your help principles, but sometimes you just get caught over helping or get yeah. like stuck there and aren't oh, able wow. to get back out right. Yeah. So I think that's going to be kind of a recurring theme in these clips here, right? We're going to see this one. Uh, so the pick and roll happens. And I see that, you know, you're in here kind of tagging this roll man real quick. Your guy's a little late to recover. So, like, kind of a tough spot for you. Yeah. But but we'll see. That, like, you're kind of, like, vertical and, like, not really able to, you know, not really, like, hightailing it out there. You're kind of, like, still upright. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that that was that that action they ran a lot. Uh, it's, it's actually kind of hard to guard, but uh, yeah, I was just like you said. I I probably stayed home a little too much. Um, and then like yeah, I closed out, and the closeout wasn't good at all either. That play was just a bad play. Yeah, I, and I mean those those happen. Those happen, but like yeah, it's just it's just we'll see what the next play is too. It's just like you're you're good until like right. You know, right about 
there, you're good. It's just a matter of like recognizing right now to like just get yeah. your ass back out to the three point line and then you're in good shape, right? You yeah. so it's just a very, very minor tweak, right? Yeah. Uh so we'll see, I think, again on the next play. This one's more of a baseline out of bounds situation. Um just so, yeah, exactly. Ball watching, like you said, right? Like there's a lot of stuff going on in this baseline out of bounds, right? And so it's kind of it can be easy when all this is going on to get kind of stuck. And I, 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 again, I kind of see what's happening and like what you're trying to prevent over here, right? Like you're trying to prevent that guy from rolling to the rim. Yes. So did you, you think you just got caught a little too much ball watching and like. So I think it ran, uh, it ran an action where uh, the guard takes it out and then a the big uh, um, sets a screen. So I had to stay home. Right. Uh, we was trying to play the percentages, but I just – we also know that he always hits shots. Like, he don't probably hit shots against other teams, but he always hits shots against us. So, <laughs> we knew that um, – I knew that I had to get out there, and I just, like – I just always do that. I just stay too long sometimes, and that's what happened on that play. Right. And, you know, I, I and again, like, not a huge, huge fix, but – you know, just something to be aware of as you continue forth into your pro career. Like this one, I think this one's probably like uh, the first two were a little bit like more understandable. I think this one you get really caught up and just leave them wide open there. Yeah. Just, uh, it, and it might just be that you, again, like your health principles, you like like to be in there for your teammates and help, but at the same time, just got to have that head on a swivel, right? Yes, I agree. That's exactly what it is. The header on the swivel, I have to have it on I have to have it on the swivel. Right. And then I think we'll see on this one here. This one here is kind of, kind of more so like a little, just a little off ball movement. It's not really yeah. totally on you. It's more of like a kind of rotation thing when he goes to run and double, right? Straight up. I'm not even in defensive. On, right. Um, yeah, I got to yeah. – I'm, I'm looking over these with my coaches. I was feeling the same way. It just looks bad. Like, now that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's just like, you know, it's not like that was your man at the time. But, like, you know, once you see your guy running double, just being a little lower in a defensive position to be able to, like, fight around this little screen yeah. here would make a world of difference, right? So I think maybe there's one more, last one here. Uh, so this one, you'll see you're, you're digging down, you're in the paint there, uh, at the NEC logo. And like, I think that you can potentially add some value, uh, in the pros as being like a good help defender at the nail, like kind of like what you're doing here. Like if that guy were to actually drive, like you have the kind of strength to, you know, get in there and like help cut him off, but just working on being able to both do that and be able to pop out and recover because like the guys that you're covering at the next level will, will probably be even more consistent shooters than what you've dealt with so far mm -hmm. in your career. So just, again, being able to kind of balance that, uh, you know, between helping and recovering, I think it's just one minor area to work on. Yes, I agree. Got cool, man. <laughs> well, Hey, uh, that's all I've got for film. So uh, really enjoyed digging into your clips. I mean, we, we touched on it earlier. Your story's crazy that, you know, you've kind of come up from having no offers out of school and then becoming the all-time leading scorer at a D1 program is something to be proud of. And, you know, I think despite the goofy situation right now with like this elongated pre-draft process, like yeah. I think you're very much in that wheelhouse in exhibit, exhibit 10 or D League or, yeah. you know, uh, we'll see, like, you know, there's all kinds of overseas avenues, but like, I, I'm sure you'll kind of like weigh all those options right now, kind of feel out like what the uh, best move for you is that's kind of mitigating risk and like, uh, you know, a good opportunity for you to continue to le learn and grow and develop as a player. So really excited to see uh, what's next for you. But before we sign off here, just wanted to uh, kick it over to you and kind of give you the chance to uh, speak to any teams out there that, you know, may be interested in potentially signing you. Who is Raekwon Clark? And if a team is to bring you into their organization, what can they expect from you both on and off the court? Um, 
Raquan Clark, he's just um he's a winner. Um, he wants to win. Uh, he'll do anything to uh help his team win. Um, off the court, I'm just a uh, chill, laid back guy. Uh, like to just be in the gym a lot. Um, and just a hard worker. Uh, great guy to be around. Um, love learning new things. Love uh being around his teammates. And I don't know. I just like I love basketball. Um, and like at college, I just like uh learning more. Um watching film, uh, being around my coaches to uh, just get insight and more stuff on the game. So any team that take a chance on me is going to be getting a person that uh, want to win, uh, loves loves winning, does anything to win, um, and just a hard worker, uh, a great defender, um, and just a guy that's going to be able to uh, bring a winning attitude to the team. Awesome, man. And you seem like a guy that's, you know, really good at taking feedback, right? Yeah. Like that can really – reflect on things and improve. And I think that's one of the most kind of crucial skills for any rookie that's about to start their pro career. So, you know, it seemed like that was the case, you know, based on just seeing your year over year improvement at LIU just coming into this. And it was even more apparent in this film session right now. I think that that's truly who you are. So I think teams will be encouraged by that and, you know, definitely wishing you the best of luck going forward and uh, appreciate you coming on here, man. Thank you. Thank you. Stay healthy. Stay well, um, and thank you again for having me on, on today. Sure. Of course, man. Stay safe. You too.